Hi guys, Mr. Janowski here. Um, this is chapter 10, homework number three, problem number two. So this is a ratio problem, but they're, it's a little bit trickier than some of the ones we've done. So I thought I'd make a little helper video to show you what's going on. So we've got Alice uh, with a yo-yo, Billy's got a yo-yo. They're a little bit different in mass and string length and tangential velocity. They're gonna swing them around and we're looking for how do their centripetal forces compare? So let's start with step huh, of course. So what are we looking for? How do their centripetal forces compare? So what we want is F centripetal of Alice over F centripetal of Billy. This will be equal to something, and it's just some number without units. So it's just question mark. Now remember, the next thing to do in this situation is make a list of the things that you know. So Alice's yo-yo has 1.3 times the mass of Billy's yo-yo. So what that means is mass of Alice, I mean her yo-yo, is 1.3 times the mass of Billy's yo-yo. All right, Billy's string is 1.5 times longer. So the length of the string is going to be the radius in this problem. So what that means is the radius of Billy I like to do it this way with, you know, all the Alice's on the left and the Billy's on the right. Um, the radius for Billy is 1.5 times the radius for Alice. And then Alice swings hers around with twice the tangential velocity of Billy's yo-yo. So what that means is V tangential is equal to, oh, I'm sorry, the uh, V tangential of Alice, let me just call it V sub A instead of V sub T sub A. Um, Alice's tangential velocity is twice Billy's. So it's two times V sub B. And then you should make a list of what you're going to be doing. Um, what's your formula for centripetal force? Well, centripetal force is equal to mass times centripetal acceleration. But remember, centripetal acceleration is equal to... Sorry, let me get this going. Um, a sub c is really equal to v tangential squared divided by radius. I'm going to stop writing the tangential. All right, so what does that leave us with? The next thing you should do is go back to um, your step, huh? So what we're looking for is, I'm just going to call it f sub a. I mean, it is Alice's centripetal acceleration, but f sub a over f sub b. And this is going to be equal to something over something. Uh, we'll make the top something, this guy up here, equal to F sub A. So what that's going to be is mass Alice. I'm just going to call it velocity of Alice squared over radius of Alice. And we want to make the bottom something equal to the bottom thing. So that's going to be mass of Billy, velocity of Billy squared over radius of Billy. So what I've got here is true, but it's very, very ugly. I've got a fraction being divided by a fraction. This is no fun. Um, so I want to fix this a little bit. So first let me do a little thing. I'll handle the Vs. That'll make this look a little bit nicer. So mass of Alice, velocity of Alice squared. There's going to be more. We've got mass Billy, velocity Billy squared. Uh, and then the other thing I have is 1 over r sub a, sorry, that's an a, on the top, and 1 over r sub b on the bottom. So the m's and the v's, that's not really a big deal. Um, it's this 1 over r sub a over 1 over r sub b. That's just ugly. I don't like it. I don't like to look at it. I don't like to think about it. Fractions are terrible. Fractions over fractions is even worse. Um, you've known that since first grade. Fractions are terrible. So we need to deal with this somehow. There's lots of ways to deal with this. Um, I personally just, I just move them. I know what the pattern is. I, I don't even think about how the math actually is. Um, Mrs. Evans has a certain way, keep change flip or keep flip change, something like that, or keep switch. I don't know what, the, what she calls it. Um, I think of it a different way. Uh, let me just show you another way of thinking of this. Maybe this is the clearest. Remember, when you're doing math, you can always multiply by one. Multiplying by one doesn't change anything. Um, 
So you're always allowed to do it. And remember, any number divided by itself is equal to one, with the exception of zero. Zero over zero is undefined. Um, but I'm just going to do something that's going to look a little bizarre here. But just for fun, I'm going to multiply this by r sub a over r sub a, because um, that's just equal to one, so I can do that. And I'm also going to multiply it by r sub b over r sub b. So that seems silly. Why am I doing this? What does this accomplish? Um, if we look at the top, I have one over r sub a times r sub a. So that means like this part here and this part, those cancel, those go away. Um, doesn't cancel on the bottom because r sub a isn't canceled with anything on the bottom. And if I look on the bottom, I have one over r sub b and r sub b. So this guy cancels with this guy. So I ended up with an r sub b on the top and an r sub a on the bottom. So let me rewrite that to make this a little bit nicer. Um, at this point we have, don't forget the m a v a squared part. m a v a squared. And the other thing that I have on the top is now r sub b. So I have two a's and a b on the top. And on the bottom I'm going to have m sub b v sub b squared. So m sub b v sub b squared, uh, and I also have this r sub a. So I have two b's and an a on the bottom, which looks weird, but that's that's how we did it. That works out. Um, let me rewrite this real quick. So down here we have f sub a over f sub b is equal to m sub a v sub a squared r sub b m sub b, v sub b squared, r sub a. All right, so we've done the tricky thing uh, in one way. You know, we, we've gotten rid of that. From here on out, this is just a ratio problem like we learned last chapter. So from here on out, we're going to play this game of taking everything term by term and then deciding either to keep the thing or to replace the thing. So I'll go ahead and do that here. So all of this is equal to something over something. The first thing we come to is m sub a, and we have to decide, do we keep it or do we replace it? Well, let's look over here. m sub a equals 1.3 m sub b. m sub a is very easy to replace because m sub a equals something. It equals 1.3 m sub b. So if it's easy to replace, replace it. The next term we have is v sub a. All right, well, v sub a is equal to 2 v sub b. So that is also very easy to replace. So instead of writing v sub a squared here, I'm going to write 2 v sub b. And this is going to get squared, but remember, I need to be sure that I'm squaring the whole thing. So I put the whole thing in parentheses, and that gets squared. And then the last thing we have is r sub b. So do we want to keep it or replace it? Well, look at this line right here. r sub b is equal to 1.5 r sub a. So r sub b is very easy to replace, so I'm going to replace it. So that's going to be 1.5 r sub a. So the way this one worked out is I replaced everything on the top. I'm going to end up keeping everything on the bottom. So m sub b, well, that's difficult to replace because of this 1.3. So I'm going to keep m sub b. v sub b, which gets squared. OK, well, this v sub b has this 2 here. So it's difficult to replace it, so I'm going to keep it. So v sub b squared is going to remain v sub b squared. And then the last thing is r sub a. All right, well, r sub a has this 1.5 in front of it, so it's difficult to replace, so I don't replace it. Um, I keep it. All right, uh, and now we can do some things. m sub b over m sub b, that'll go away. r sub a over r sub a, that goes away. I don't want to deal with the v sub b's yet because i got to square the thing, so we'll deal with that in a second. So what does this end up being? Uh, remember to keep the 1.3. I guess I should put that in parentheses so it's clear what I'm doing. Um, so the 1.3 remains. 2 v sub b, that whole thing squared, doesn't give you 2 v sub b squared. It gives you 4 v sub b squared. So that's that. Uh, and 1.5, that remains. The RA part got canceled, but we still have 1.5. 1.5 1 
And then on the bottom, all we had was V sub B squared. All right, at this point, I can cancel the V sub B squared and the V sub B squared. So on the top, I have 1.3 times 4 times 1.5, and that gives me 7.8. So let me take it back to the beginning. What did we have? F sub A over F sub B is equal to 7.8. So that can be your final answer um, if you want to do it. If you'd rather look at it the way I've written it there, if you multiply both sides of this by F sub B, you would end up with F sub A is equal to 7.8 F sub B. Either way of writing that is, um, is acceptable. So that's a trickier ratio problem. Again, the whole deal, which one's the laser pointer? That's the circle. I thought I had a laser pointer. Oh, there it is. Um, yeah, the big thing here was you had a fraction over a fraction. Like this part here was terrible. You need some way of dealing with that. Um, I showed you one way of doing it, which is I multiplied by R sub A over R sub A and R sub B over R sub B. And hopefully you could see how those things canceled. Mrs. Evans' way is a little bit different. The way I normally think of this is just a little bit different too. I just move the things to where I know they're going to end up going because that's how the nuns who taught me how to do this kind of algebra taught me. Um, so that's how I do it. Uh, you can do it whichever way you work, whichever way works for you. Uh, but somehow you have to get from this part right here over to this part right here. And once you get it to here, the rest of it is just the you know, keep or replace game until you've canceled out all of the things you don't know. So that's that problem. Hopefully you found that helpful.